Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is uh, Facebook James, and uh, we got a wonderful, wonderful show. We're going to kind of recap the season a little bit and uh, the unfortunate game that was that took place this past Friday. And then we're going to talk about the playoff bracket seedings, uh, playoff. Hey, just all you need to know, Pally football is in the playoffs. So after the opener, uh, we're going to come back and uh, do everything we need to do to get you caught up and updated on everything Pally football. Thank you for watching. See you in a second. Hey, win on me, win on three, ready, one, two, three. Win! Win. Oh, yeah. Win. Some call it the gridiron. That's right, way to skim it. Others, 100 yards of pay. Ah, too much. We just like to call it football. 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 With Facebook James. Football, baby. Football, baby, indeed. What's going on, everyone? Thanks for watching. First of all, Happy Halloween to those of you who are not out there tricking or treating or just trick or treating. I don't want to say trick or trick. Anyway, uh, welcome to the show. It's a wonderful uh, October 31st. Nice, wonderful, cool night. Uh, you know, a lot of fun festivities out there happening. And I can hear it uh, just on the other side of uh, this door there. Kids are running around, uh, you know, collecting all the wonderful candy. Uh as they should, you know, that is on Halloween, um, Halloween on a Monday night. So, uh, you know, but I thank you for uh, chiming in and uh, tuning in on this wonderful show. Like I said a few moments ago, we're going to give a wonderful, wonderful uh, recap. Uh, we're going to talk about the playoff seedings that we're uh, currently involved in. And uh, what does this mean for Pally football? And uh, first of all, if you don't know who I am, uh, they call me Facebook James around these parts. And so uh, I guess I'm, I've been uh, called the voice of Pally football by Steve Galuzzo. So thank you for that, Steve. And uh, so we're just doing what we can. I'm a pa parent volunteer with the uh, football uh, team. I've been a part of the uh, Pally football program. I don't know. Uh, this is my ninth year um, being involved in some way or form. And so just happy to kind of uh, produce this wonderful show. And I thank you for watching again and again. So, you know, we're just going to go ahead and hop into um, – Hop into everything that we need to uh, get into tonight, and I see a couple of comments, so we're going to go ahead and uh, say hello to uh, some of those of you who have uh, who have tuned in tonight, and uh, someone said, hey, thanks for watching. That was actually me. <laughs> Just making sure my live feed, uh, my comments from uh, the Facebook group is uh, live and kicking and well, and so that was me, and then um, actually, um, Maureen Lascala, she actually tuned in and said, hey. Let's go, Pally. And actually, I appreciate you, Maureen, uh, chiming in, tuning in, and watching. Um, and we're trying to go, we're going to do our best to get you updated as it relates to everything over here in Pally football. So, uh, as we normally do, uh, we usually talk about the updates. And so, let's kind of go through some of our updates real quick. So, uh, this coming week, actually, uh, <laughs> dads, or, you know, don't, you don't even have to be a dad, man. Uh, Mom, dad, you know, cousin, brother, auntie. Hey, if you want to work the chain gang, uh, we have a playoff game this coming Friday. And so we're going to talk extensively about that. But um, if you'd like to volunteer for the chain gang uh, for this coming game against uh, Huntington Park, then you can uh, follow the link below that you see right there on the sign up genius. And there are other volunteer areas that we need as well. So again, we need um, people to help out in the concession stands, selling merch. Um, and of course, this is a hot commodity right here, being able to serve on the chain gang. So if you're able to serve on the chain gang, that would be really, really cool. We would really appreciate your help. Um, yeah, we're going to we're going to need the help, um, especially if we host um, this playoff game. And if we win, then we'll have another home game. So at least for the next two games. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and take care of this week, one week at a time. Um, but yeah, just nice to uh, have people think about what might happen in the future. So dads, uh, cousins, uncles, brothers, sisters, hey, you know, um, we'll, we'll take them all. Yeah, here's your opportunity to participate on the chain gang. And of course, as always, 
Shout out to Press and Sew. Um, and so you can get your merch still. Uh, you can get your merch 24-7, uh, 365. You don't have to be, uh, we don't have to be in football season for you to uh, buy your Pally merch. And so actually, I think I'm wearing one of the offerings right now. And so it's a wonderful, a wonderful, nice, soft T-shirt. And not only do we have these T-shirts here, but we have the ones pictured. So you can go to pressandsew.com backslash Pally uh, football and you can get whatever you need. And then... Um, as I talked about a few moments ago. So let me go ahead and set up this playoff picture, if you will. Uh, so this coming Friday. So uh, as a result of our uh, game on Friday, we were put in uh, the Division One. So there are two divisions in uh, Los Angeles City section football. There's actually there's more than two. There's several. Uh, but the top two are open division where the open division only takes the top eight teams. So the top eight teams in the city and how they're ranked, they're able to go to the open division uh, uh, football bracket. And then there's division one where you have more teams in that particular division. There's actually double the teams. There are 16 teams in division one. And so. Um, you know, by us not winning our football game, you know, there was talk if we won uh, our game against Venice, then we would have been uh, maybe the last seed in the open division, which meant that we would pr probably play a higher seeded team, uh, which which would make our chances for winning a championship in open division a little tougher. We would really, really have to play hard. Um, and so we're seated actually in the Division One playoff bracket, which is uh, where I think we, you know, we can play and, and really compete. And if we really uh, line our ducks up in a row, we could actually win this whole whole thing. And so uh, we are in the Division One uh, that has 16 teams. And so, uh, and we'll sh I'll show you the bracket in a couple of moments. And so it's 16 teams. And so we're ranked number three. Okay, we're ranked number three um, in this particular bracket. Uh, gives us a better chance to kind of uh, win and compete. And so that's why I said earlier, you know, we take it week by week. Um, but we can have actually multiple home games during, during the course of the playoff, uh, playoff. So here, this coming Friday, November 4th, uh, Stadium by the Sea. Come on out. It's going to be another game. We're actually playing the... Um, I think they're the 15th seed or um, not too sure. We'll, we'll, uh, I'll show you when we get to the brackets. Uh, but, yeah, come on out. Uh, tickets are already on GoFan.co. You can purchase your tickets. Come on out. The game um, has been confirmed to start at 730. So we won't, you won't have to worry about a, a JV game. Uh, just come on out for 730. You know, come on out at 7, get your, get, get your seat, get your hot dog. Uh, your, your, your water, your Coke, whatever it is, uh, make you make yourself comfortable in the stadium. And we're definitely going to give you a show. Um, so come on out this coming Friday, um, our first game in the Division One playoffs. And like I said, we're playing against Huntington Park. Um, and then the last thing that we can talk about further down the line is actually after the season, which is our annual football banquet. And so all players, <coughs> whether it's JV or varsity, you're invited to come on out and, uh, you know, we, we're going to close up our football season with the wonderful uh, banquet. Um, there's nothing uh, like gathering around food. And so we're going to have it in Mercer Hall. Um, and as you can see there on December 11th from 12 to 3. And so we're going to have uh, food. Uh, we're going to have some fun. And then I also throw this other F in there, fellowship, food fund <laughs> fellowship, as we recognize the hard work that our coaches and our players have put into this particular season. So uh, details in terms of cost uh, will, you know, is forthcoming. A matter of fact, I believe the QB board is meeting tomorrow just to kind of put some things in place so that we can have a wonderful banquet for our football coaches and definitely for our football um, players. And so just mark that on your calendar and uh, be on the lookout for that, okay? Um, so before we talk about the varsity implications and all that kind of good stuff, I definitely want to recognize um, – the JV squad, the JV squad are actually uh, Western League champs, I believe, according to Coach Todd. And so, uh, you know, they had a wonderful, wonderful season. Of course, this is or was Coach Todd's first year coaching uh, for our particular team, our JV team. He's been around football 
uh, for a very long time, uh, doing certain camps in the area, in and around the Palisades. And so it was almost just uh, an automatic fit that he would become the JV coach after uh, Coach Ray Morrison kind of stepped away. And so uh, they had a wonderful season. I'm not too sure about their record. We could probably look that up in Max Preps. But I did have an opportunity to talk about or talk with Coach Todd and several players um, after their JV uh, JV victory over Venice. I believe they won 47-7 to seven over, that, uh, over their uh, Venice JV's team. And so uh, let's go ahead and see what Coach Todd, um, Liam, uh, Matias, Ty, and uh, I believe Harrison had to say as it relates, as it relates to playing football um, against Venice and for this particular season. So we'll go ahead and roll the tape. <laughs> That's our superstar, too. He's a player, but, hey, I can't be more proud of this team from day one when we started to now. That was 16 weeks, 17 weeks, I don't know, whatever it is. I'm just proud of each and every one of you guys. The progress you guys made personally and on this field as a team, you know, remarkable, man. You know, I, I'm sure I was hard on you guys sometimes, but this is the result of it, okay? That's your boy right there. That's an IB that's, for us. that's what our JV team look like. It's going to the baddest mug in the land. Our freaking running back is Harrison. Yes, hey! Yeah. Yeah. Magic man, baby. It's magic. Hey, this is the bad. I've been telling him all year long. He's like, I want to play safe. I said, you're the baddest running back in the city, man. He's the best running back in JV football. Might be best in varsity soon. But he's the best in the nation. Yes, he, he can take Chris Y'all you you understand, understand why I said he's done some incredible things for us this year. And <laughs> well, he wasn't, wasn't shabby today, but other game ball goes to our, uh, our our superstar lockdown linebacker who intercepts every ball. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, great effort, guys. I hope everybody got to play. I hope everybody, you know, got something to end the season on, you know, that you can talk about. Oh, Mr. Terrell, you can talk about. You could have had two oh, touchdowns. Hey, this is uh, Facebook James with the JV Report, and I have um, Coach Todd, the man, the myth, the legend, man. Congratulations on, on completing your first full season of JV football uh, here at Palisades, man. Thank you so much, man. It's been a, a pleasure for me. It's been a great run. Uh, we've had an excellent season, and uh, thank you so much for always having me, man. I appreciate you. We did we did good tonight. You know, we did okay. Man, you you, you did better than okay, man. Uh, Forty-seven to seven, uh, just just a trouncing over uh, over Venice, man. Uh, just kind of tell us, you know, what happened out there in the first half, and then uh, I, I know we got some players behind us. So you kind of want to talk about? Uh, tell us what happened, man. You guys were on on fire today. You know what? Uh, our last game. You know, I really let the guys know that we had uh, uh, Venice players that I coach as the coaches over there, and the kids really always step up to the plate, and they want to do something really uh, to prove how, how well I've coached them or they've played for me. Um, so they came out on fire. You know, we, we scored our running back, Harrison. Uh, Harrison Carter is just amazing. He scored on the first play of the game. First play of the game. First play, okay. So on a stretch play, and then he, he scored three touchdowns today, maybe four. But uh, he was he was awesome. Blind block for him, and it was just great. I can't uh, take away from what he does. But our entire team, our defense continued to be who they are the whole year. They held him to seven points. Um, it was zero up until the end, and but we did good, man. We were, I, I was proud of the boys. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, your first year uh, here, JV Coach, what are some of your takeaways that you can uh, try to implement for next year? Yes, sir. Uh, definitely, we're going to have a, a, a good group coming back. So this was a, a really good team that we had. Um, we have some really good freshmen coming back. And now some of them are moving on to varsity, but I think our, our core unit is going to be there. And uh, I think we have something to build off of. And then knowing the, the success we've had this year, those guys will want to have their own success next year. And we'll bring in some new players. And, and you know, we're going to keep the same format of what we do. I, I coach hard. They play hard. That's the end result. That's how we do and uh, they have fun now. 
Absolutely. No, we, we can hear. We can see it, actually. Uh, so congratulations, man. You, Wonderful win. Uh, and I believe I heard uh, Coach Lofton say you guys are league champs for JV, yes, for the Western League. So congratulations thank again. You, uh, man, we look forward to seeing some of these guys move up uh, to varsity <laughs> to varsity uh, next year. And we look forward to seeing some of these same players yes, uh, here on the JV squad. So congratulations much, again, man. my man. Absolutely. All right, so Facebook James here, uh, continuing the JV report, and we have two of the world famous, or at least Pally famous, uh, JV football players. Man, they just won uh, against Venice, uh, 47 to seven, and so uh, we here with Harrison, who's a running back, and we have Matias. Uh, you know, I'll call him a tall drink of water, man. So you guys have just finished your first uh, full season of uh, JV uh, football, man. Tell us uh, just kind of what you thought about this whole season. It kind of went by really, really quick. Just tell us your, some of your takeaways and uh, what you can look forward to for next year. Um, this season wasn't that bad. I'm just trying to get better, work on my, like, juking and all that, like, vertical and all that. And... For next season, I'm trying to plan on being the best running back I could be on VAR. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Coach Todd kind of referred to you as the best um, JV running back, at, uh, definitely Western League, probably in the city. Uh, so congratulations, man. I, I think you had a couple of couple of two or three touchdowns today. Uh, kind of Four. Oh, I'm sorry. He had four. <laughs> so just kind of uh, tell us, um, you know, what did you see out there as you scored uh, at least, you know, one of your touchdowns on, uh, on tonight? Oh, I just see the open hole, go through it, and score. That's it. You see the open hole, he goes through it, and he scores. That's what's up. And it, I guess it helps if you have amazing blazing speed. So that's uh, that's all all good. And then we have Matias. Uh, Matias, man, you just completed your first full uh, season, man. Uh, just tell us some of your insight. I know we talked a little bit earlier in the school year. Uh, just kind of tell us some of your takeaways um, for you in terms of what you need to do for next year to get better. Well, this year is just, it was great. There was a lot of adversity, but this team overcame everything because we just won the league. And I just, I love this team to death. And for next year, I want to stay with them and I want to get better, improve in every aspect of my game and our team as a whole. And I just want to continue with my boys, like keep playing. Absolutely, man. There might be a slight chance you move to JV. Just this is just me. This is just Facebook James talking. But um, you know, it's all also cool to stay down on JV, get those reps in, develop that camaraderie. Uh, so congratulations to Harrison. Congratulations to Matias, and uh, best luck. And we look forward to seeing you. Uh, you know, next year on the, on the football field. Uh, thank you. Thank you. All right. It's Facebook James signing off with uh, Matias and uh, Harrison. I'm going to talk to other two other uh, JV football players. So stay tuned. Thank you, guys. Okay, so I'm here, Facebook James again, here with uh, Ty and uh, Liam. Uh, Liam, man, uh, coach calls you, you know, the man with the great hands. A couple of interceptions today against the win against Venice. Uh, kind of tell us what you saw, and uh, how did you prepare against this game? Uh, Venice is a heart, always plays his heart. So how did you prepare for tonight's game? Uh, so tonight's game was our rivalry, of course, and so all week I was locked in. I was dialed in, you know. I was, I was even watching what I was eating, how much water I was drinking. Like, I was ready to go this week. This weekend so I just dialed in like laser focus and basically on my second pick basically it was a screen play by the running back right and I saw him come out of the backfield like in a formation he never came out right so I was man on him so I basically just watched him come out come out straight up the middle and he he, he broke down did a curl route and I just jumped in I just and I just got in front of it that's what's up man now you you were all over field man uh, and I'm sure you're going to be on varsity next year, so we can look forward to seeing you doing your thing um, as a linebacker on varsity. Uh, let me talk to Ty real quick, man. Ty, uh, you didn't necessarily start the season uh, playing the QB position, but you got a lot of time. Coach uh, Ty put you in, man. Just kind of tell us, uh, you know, your maturity, uh, you know, as it as it relates to, you know, playing this particular season, not starting, but then getting a lot of time on the field. Yeah, I mean, I. Like I, just learning the game and everything. Like I, I'd never played the position before, and it was a, you know, a really steep learning curve from the beginning of the year to the end. Like, the player I am now would is miles better than even five, ten weeks ago. So uh, it's yeah, it's just an amazing uh, journey and learning. And I look forward to playing on varsity. I'm only a sophomore. Absolutely. Okay, so you're a sophomore too. Okay, absolutely. All right, that's cool. Um, so, you know, again, congratulations. I see you, your guys are uh, having a good time celebrating the win. Um, hopefully tonight we can get a, uh, another win for our varsity squad. But uh, congratulations, man. You guys were doing your thing um, on the field, and I'm sure you're doing it in the classroom as well. So we appreciate you being student athletes and uh, continue to work hard, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the field next season. Thank you. 
You're welcome. All right, this is uh, Facebook James signing off for Liam and Ty. And, uh, again, this is your JV report um, here on the field from, from Pally. <laughs> hey, so there it is. Uh, man, just uh, – just a good overall feeling for the from those boys and uh, Coach Todd. Uh, they had a tremendous year, um, and so you know, hats off to Coach Todd. I believe uh, earlier today I saw one of his Facebook posts, just you know, uh, in a state of gratitude about uh, you know his coaches, the guys that he was coaching with, um, and all the support that he got from uh, Pally, uh, you know, from previous coaches, from himself, from you know, just, you know, parents and things of that nature. So just a wonderful, wonderful season for those guys. And hopefully uh, next year they can come back and, you know, go undefeated. Um, and so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Coach Todd has laid a wonderful foundation. I'm sure they're going to do very, very well. And now what really happens is, uh, you know, those boys were talking about their experience at, at JV. Now, uh, you know, they have to prepare now uh, for next season. And so, uh, you know, yeah, JV season might be over. But now it's time for them to hit the weight room uh, to get some, you know, maybe get some trainers. Uh, definitely take the PE football class, and they're going to get faster, bigger, stronger. And that's the goal. And so I know Ty said that he had never played QB before. So now it's time for him to get more reps um, at the high school level so that he can build his confidence. And so, uh, you know, summertime, we'll put out some information about uh, different uh, QB camps, college camps that the boys can go to. Um, and, and like I said, hopefully, you know, uh, Coach Todd is going to continue to mentor them. And then, you know, for, for Matias, you know, uh, you know, he's 6'4", 6'5". He's a tall drink of water. You know, I wouldn't be, be surprised. Uh, you know, my thought was when I was interviewing him, I think I said that uh, he, he would be a good candidate for, um, you know, for varsity, to move up on varsity. But, you know, you don't want to have too many QBs on, on varsity, on the varsity team, and not have any um, on the JV squad. And so, you know, we'll see. Um, but all those guys, uh, Liam, um, Harrison, they just have to get better. Um, and, and not only those four guys, but the whole team, they have to really train, uh, get mentally prepared for the next season. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, sky's the limit for those guys. So uh, appreciate Coach Todd and what he was able to do uh, with those boys on the team this year. Now, um, you know, I want to recap – I want to recap this 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 uh, moving on to varsity, man. That was a rough game. That was a rough game. Um, oh, yeah, just a rough game to watch. Um, and I'm sure it was even rougher to play in the game. And so here's what we're going to do. Um, I just kind of want to recap um, some of the. Um, I, I want to recap some of the games that we uh, had during the season, and then talk about you know the playoff bracket, and then maybe we'll talk about uh, kind of what happened. Um, last uh, last Friday. But even before we talk about the game, I really want to uh, recognize some of the seniors. And so <laughs> you can say that again. Um, listen, what I really want to do is, um, and Maureen, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you talked about uh, me, my, my saying the boys did not have a good game. And so uh, yeah, it was it was it was kind of horrible to watch, difficult to watch, not horrible, but just difficult to watch. Uh, but realizing uh, that we play the number two team in the city. And so that team, Venice, uh, they're going to go into the open division. And so remember when I talked about the two different divisions between open and division one, you can kind of see the difference. Now, not to compare them to last year, but last year's team was definitely worthy of being in the open division. And so, you know, I tried not to, uh, for the whole season, compare this particular team to last year's team because they're two differently in uh, two Two, two different teams entirely, right? And so definitely don't want to do that, but I think we're in the right bracket, uh, right division where we need to play. So um, before we talk about uh, playoff brackets, I do want to mention that last Friday was our senior night. And so uh, one of our uh, parent volunteers, one of, one of the photographers, was able to capture some of the moments. And so before we talk about, uh, you know, the season and the Venice game and then the playoff bracket, I just want to call your attention to some of the amazing photos uh, that uh, Mr. Hagen, who is one of our um, uh, photographers for the Pally QB Club, he just captured the right essence for uh, you know of our guys, and so here is Coach Todd after after the win. You kind of don't even recognize him without the hat. So that's him. Uh, Coach Loft is right behind him, uh, one of the JV players, 
And so, um, and that's Heidi. Um, and, you know, can I give a shout out to Heidi? A uh, shout out to Heidi because Heidi was like, hey, Facebook James, I want to do the live broadcast for JV. And I was like, okay, cool, let's, let's make that happen. So we told her what kind of gear uh, that she, you know, needed to have. And so what she did, she decided to go ahead and broadcast the JV games. And so shout out to, uh, to, to Heidi for doing that. Um, and so we're going to continue to, uh, you know, uh, teach and train other folks to do the same thing. You know, Facebook James might not be around, uh, you know, on certain games. And so we need to have a fill in. And so just, you know, uh, hats off to a Heidi who was able to step in and, uh, you know, fulfill that position. And, uh, you know, she did a good job as a rookie. So we're just going to get her some training. And, uh, you know, if you're unable to watch a JV game, um, if Heidi's on the sideline, Heidi's going to call the game. And so just, again, hats off. And we really appreciate your commitment to uh, broadcasting the JV games. Okay. So as we kind of scroll, you see some of the JV players just kind of excited, uh, you know, about their win, about their season. And so they were running. I think they were taking this picture as we were. Um, if you look over behind the, uh, the gentleman on the far left, you can see Coach Todd. Um, you know, being interviewed by myself. But, yeah, they were hyped. They were extra hyped. And so um, that's Liam and one of his um, teammates. And then we get into the senior. This is the last regular home game for the seniors, right? So I know we have a playoff game, but, you know, uh, the last uh, night for our regular season is always dedicated to our seniors. So, uh, Mr. Hagan, if you're watching, man, you did a wonderful job with some of these images. And, you know, I just happened to stumble on these images this morning. I was like, man, these are super dope. So number four, of course, is my son. Uh, he was able to capture him running down, uh, down, you know, getting a, a high five. And then uh, this is probably right before he ran down. So that's the savior, Anthony and Jovan, um, just standing in line, ready to go down and uh, meet their parent um, at the end. And so these are just these faces are just wonderful, you know, as Christopher Washington. And, you know, I, I, I need to stop because I don't know all the boys uh, first and last names. Um, so I'm just going to scroll through. <laughs> but these are some super dope, amazing shots. Right. Uh, look, look at his eyes, man. I mean, that's that's something that you can frame and put on a wall forever. And, and, and the thing about senior night, these boys will remember playing uh, their high school for their high school team for some of these guys this is their last chance this is their last time playing organized football right some have college aspirations to play uh, you know that some might go the juco route uh, right now we don't have any uh, we I don't think we have any players who have been offered I know of one player who's been offered um, but yeah so this for, for for the majority of these boys high school football, that's it. That's it. And so just being able to capture some of these faces and their expressions is priceless. It's priceless. And so these are photos and images that can be downloaded and preserved in a uh, frame, frame some on somebody's wall. So, yeah, just just wonderful. Um, the innocence um, and just the uh, jubilation that these boys are, you know, the emotion that you can see on their faces. So. Um, just a wonderful time. And so just, uh, you know, hats off to our seniors. And not only our senior football players, man, I, I heard we have about 18, 19 uh, varsity cheerleaders. So uh, they're going to have to do some restocking of uh, the cheerleading squad as well. So uh, we'll fumble through some of these images as well. And so, again, Mr. Hagan, we appreciate you, man, doing what you do, uh, capturing these lovely faces and uh, these memories, most importantly, uh, for the guys and the girls <laughs> on our cheerleading uh, squad there. So just a wonderful time. Um, I think that's Chris, and that might be the last one. Okay, so, oh, and there we go. That's the graphic that I just posted a couple of, um, couple of hours ago. So, yeah, so let's go ahead and hop into, um, you know, break down, recap the season uh, to show you how far we've come, uh, some of the struggles, some of the adversity we had to face, and then we'll talk about the playoff bracket, and then we're done for the night, okay? So here we are. Uh, we finished our season uh, overall, and hopefully you can see that uh, pretty good. Let me see if I can enlarge it for some of us who might have difficulty seeing. So there we go. So overall, we finished seven and three, which is not a bad. Uh, that's not a bad, uh, you know, 70 percent. Um, you know, I guess if we were in school, that would be about a C. Right. Um, and but in league, we went four and one. And of course, the loss was to our Venice team. 
Um, and so away home we were three and two. Uh, away we were four and one. Um, points for we scored 346 points. Um, <clears throat> points against 221. Okay, in the current streak is one uh, one L, which means one loss. And if you're wondering where I'm getting these wonderful stats, if you look at the top right up here, hopefully you can see my cursor. Um, that's Max Preps. And so if you're really uh, into data, this is a wonderful way, wonderful resource for parents uh, to kind of look and see some of the stats of the season. And so um, there's a plethora of information that we can scroll and uh, you know go through. But we're not going to go through everything. We're just going to kind of recap our season. So um, El Camino, we started with the win. Um, San Fernando, we went there with the win, 51-7. to uh, The win against uh, El Camino Real, my alma mater, 35-19. <laughs> we went to St. Jen, and that was that was the game right there. Uh, I remember that game. It was kind of raining a little bit. We actually pulled it out. They, 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 they fought back, right, in the second half. They fought back and, uh, you know, put 21 points in the second half unanswered. Um, I don't know where our defense was in the second half, but uh, we had a game-winning uh, touchdown. Um, run by uh, Xavier Riley. So we won that particular game 34 to uh, 21. And then we had two losses right there in the middle uh, against Cleveland and then the Brentwood School. Brentwood School, uh, you know, we started to come back in the second half, but it was a little bit uh, too late for us to, uh, uh, you know, to actually win. Um, and then University, of course, 56 to 12. Uh, Hamilton, 40 to 6. Then we started our winning ways again. So University was our first game during uh, for the winter uh, winter league uh, so that's a league game um, Hamilton was a league game at home 40 to 6 Fairfax we beat them 41 to 8 almost a shutout and then Westchester 40 to 26 and you know Westchester decided you know our defense was lackadaisical um, they decided to uh, put some points up in the second half we didn't we we couldn't score any points in the second half and so in order for us to get a little bit better we have to learn how to score some points in the second half. And so we'll talk about Mr. Riley's kind of keys to success maybe at near the end of the game. And then this final score, uh, which I'm really not going to go. Uh, well, I actually do. I do want to go into it because uh, I want everyone to see what kind of team uh, qualifies for an open division team. And so uh, our last loss, 16, uh, 60 to 14. Uh, we suffered the loss. Um, that was the Western League Championship on the line. And some of the kids were upset. Um, and, you know, I couldn't get a, a post-game uh, interview. However, you know, I think kids need to understand, um, you know, and, and, you know, it's it's okay to, you know, be happy. And, you know, but you got to take the good with the bad. And so uh, not necessarily saying that you got to show all of your emotions. But, you know, it, it's a life, it's a life uh, lesson. Um, that you're not going to win everything. You're not going to get everything that you want, no matter how hard you try. Sometimes, you know, your best might not be good enough. And so, uh, you know, you in this particular case, Venice was a stronger team. And, you know, they did what they needed to do. So let me let me show you how um, how well polished they were. OK, so let's go into the box score. Um, and so hopefully you should be able to see this. Um, I might have to uh, let me see if I can decrease it. There you go. All righty. So you should be able to see the whole score. Uh, you know, we were on fire. We came out on fire in the first quarter, um, and that was it. That was it. Our, our offense kind of sputtered, uh, was unproductive the rest of the game. And as you can see in the second quarter, they scored 21 points. They scored 12 points in the third quarter and then 13 points in the fourth quarter. And so they're a well-oiled football machine. And so here are some of the stats. I want you guys to see the stats. And I, want you, I really want you to understand how good of a team they were, right? Um, so if you look at their their uh, quarterback, Paul Kessler, this guy threw 14 of 18 for 331 yards. Now, um, you know, he's also 6'5", and he's also uh, has several D1 offers. And D1 offers, you know, he has a D1 offer to Georgia, I think Tennessee, uh, North Texas, and there was one other one that kind of jumped out at me. But no, he's the real deal. Um, and so, you know, 6'5", tall drink of water, and he knows how to spin the ball, right? Um, and so he threw for four touchdowns, high QB rating, and his longest one was 58 yards. Now, if we look in comparison to what our offense did, um, I mean, there's no match. Um, our boys have to get a little bit better. And so you see it right there, um, you know, for Roman and Zach. They, they have to get better. And, you know, not just saying the QB. I'm saying it begins with our offensive line. Our offensive not line 
needs to block. And so that's one of the keys, Mr. Riley's or Facebook James's key to success. We have to have an O-line that will block and be able to support, um, you know, the defense. Because if you're just able to run through our offensive line, then that's not going to give our QBs time to throw the ball. And so, um, you know, that defense from Venice was all over us. Um, and, you know, several parents even commented to me afterwards, like, hey, what's going on with number so-and-so? What's going on with number so-and-so? He's not even blocking. He's just standing right up, and they're just running right by. So the first thing, we have to have our offensive line do what they need to do so that our QB can have time. Not only our QB, our running back can have time to run, okay? So um, that's a little bit about passing. Let's look at the rushing um, stats, if we will. Uh, Robert Lamar, he had 16 touches for 218 yards. And his longest one was uh, 56 yards. He had one touchdown. And then Romeo Signor, uh, Signor, 12 carries for 102 yards. This guy had three touchdowns. So they know how to run the ball as well. Now, on the opposite side of the ball for Pally, uh, Chris was trying to get things started. He had 10 for 32. Uh, Roman, he ran a couple, and he did have a touchdown. So that was uh, pretty decent. And then Anthony, he tried to get it uh, going as well. He was, on, well, four for 31. Uh, a 31 yard, 7.8 yard per carry. That's pretty dope. Um, but again, we need to have some blocking up front. And then um, the last thing, I'm not even gonna say my name number 21. I'm not gonna butcher his name like that. So we need, we need to, we need, we need some help. Uh, those guys were really doing what they needed to do. Um, and then passing uh, and receiving. Uh, let me see, Rashawn Jackson. That's that's the guy. 159, he had five receptions for 159 yards. His average catch was 31 yards. He had two touchdowns. These guys are definitely division, uh, open division worthy. They're ranked the number two team in the city. So, um, you know, we were really playing, um, you know, trying. Tr we were trying to hang. We were just trying to hang, but uh, they were a little bit stronger, faster, bigger than we were. And so um, that's why we lost 60 to um, 14. Okay, but here's the good thing. So that game is done. It's over. We're still in the playoffs. And so let's look ahead to what we have to focus on right now. And I'll continue with my keys, uh, keys for, <laughs> for for success for the for the round, this round of uh, football. So here we are. Let me zoom in just a little bit because I know it's kind of small for you guys to see. So let me see if I can zoom in so that you guys can get a better look of uh, what's going on. So like I said, uh, the Vision One Open Round. There's actually three, uh, Division One, Division Two, and Division Three. So we're in Division One, which is right under Open Division. And there's nothing wrong with being the D1 champs. Um, I believe Venice a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, they were actually the D1 uh, Division One champs. So it's all good. A title is a title, and we'll take it. So, um, so here it is. Uh, 14, I'm sorry, 16 teams in this particular uh, bracket here. You have the likes of Granada Hills, who have a wonderful team they're ranked to number one they have a wonderful uh, stable of running backs uh, Canoga Park is ranked number 16 Dorsey Southgate Cleveland we faced Cleveland before right we might have an opportunity to face them again D depends on how well they do and how well we do in the playoffs uh, Lincoln uh, Fairfax El Camino we've played uh, both of those teams and there we are uh, we're ranked to number three and so we're playing the number 14 seed uh, Huntington Park so on paper we should win. On paper, we should win. And so this is our bracket down here at the bottom. So in our bracket, we have Palisades, Huntington Park, Gardena, uh, Daimoli, Westchester, Narbonne, Hamilton, and Carson. And so some of those teams we've already played and we've already beat them. So we've played Westchester. We've played, um, I thought I saw Fairfax. Maybe not. Um, oh, okay. Hamilton is the other team. Hamilton is the 15th seed. Carson is the two seed. So, you know, if you look at it, you know, the stronger seeds should win because they have home games, right? But anything can happen in high school football. So uh, we're playing, and if you look at our seed right here, uh, here we are, Palisades in Huntington Park. If we win, then we play the winner of Gardena and Domley, right? So theoretically, again, if we win, we're going to have another home game right here on next Thursday, right? But we have to win. Um, so the next Thursday, because that Friday is Veterans Day, uh, they're not going to have high school activities on a national holiday. So next Thursday, if we win this coming Friday, we'll play on Thursday, which means we'll need more volunteers for the chain gang, for the merch, for the concessions, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so 
Um, so yeah. Um, and then if we win this game on 11, 10, depending on where the seed is, uh, you know, we'll play one of these. Now, if by chance, let's just say if by chance Carson wins, they beat Hamilton. Let's say if Carson wins and beats either Westchester or Narbonne, let's say if we won, then we would actually travel over to Carson to, um, you know, for the semifinal game. But we have to just take it game by game. So, you know, we want to win this game right here against Hamilton, um, Hamilton Park, Huntington Park. If we win, then we'll play Gardena or Damali. And then if we win that game, then we'll play someone down here. And eventually the championship bracket is right. The championship game is right here, which is usually played during the Thanksgiving break. I believe that Friday or Saturday. So time has not been determined. Uh, we just see uh, 2022 football championship. So again, this is the path to win four. All we have to do is win four games. So it starts tonight. It starts this coming Friday. We want you to guys to come on out and support our football team. So again, here are, uh, I guess you could say my keys of the, uh, for the playoffs. Um, first of all, our O-line has to do much better. We have to block. We have to block. We have to, uh, we can't just stand right up. We can't, I mean, we have some big dudes. Um, and so they've been going at it all year. Hopefully they can get their technique straight where they're blocking the defensive guys, defensive linemen. So they're, they're not rushing in, uh, getting tackles on our uh, running backs, uh, sacking our QB. We need to have, give, give Roman uh, time or Zach, if he's in time to throw the ball. And if there's no time, then, you know, he's going to be hurried every single night. You know, the running back is not going to be able to gain as much yards as he needs to because our uh, our, our O-line is not doing what they need to do. So, um, O-line, key success. O-line need to do what they need uh, what they need to do. And then, you know, our QBs need to play uh, extremely well. Um, we you know we have some weapons. We have Sean Greer who can catch. We have Michael King-Hagan who can catch. We have uh, Braden Sanford who can catch. We have Amari Yolas who can catch. We have uh, Marcus Brown Jr. who can catch. Those dudes, we, we have weapons. And you, as you saw from the high scores that we've, you know, when Amari came out during that university game and scored those first two touchdowns for us, awesome. When Marcus Brown Jr. against Hamilton scored those three touchdowns in six minutes, awesome. We have the talent. We have the talent. We just need time to get them guys open. Roman needs time to get them guys open, throw the ball to them. And here's the thing. Here's another key. Our receivers need to catch the ball. They've dropped a lot of balls, a lot of good balls, open balls. They need to catch the balls because if Roman's dropping dimes and they're dropping the dimes too, then we're not going to we're not going to be able to move the ball. So that's the name of the game. Um, and so our receivers definitely have to, uh, you know, catch the ball. And then last thing our um, you know, I would love to see a little bit more with our uh, running game. You man, go ahead and let Chris do his thing. And then Anthony. Man, Anthony got some speed. I would love to see Anthony get a, get a few more touches. Um, and if our guys on the O line are doing what they need to do, uh, if he if if he's able to follow their blocking, man, he has a speed. Him and Amari, I would love to see Amari, you know, back there in the backfield, getting some touches as well. Um, because on special teams, you know, the man with the green gloves, he's pretty nice. Once he gets the punt or the kickoff, he's pretty nice, and he he picks his holes. He picks his holes and gets open. And so if we can block on the O-line, uh, that way it's going to uh, give Roman some time to throw the ball. Um, our receivers are actually catching the ball. And then how far our running game, running game can get on point, um, then we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. We have a lot of weapons. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to be great. And then our, on the defensive side, man, we uh, – <laughs> Maureen says she's agreeing with me. Absolutely. On the defensive side, cause, you know – Football is, 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 is a two-way sport, and they always say defense wins championships. Championships, And so our guys up front, Evan Nirenberg, I believe he um, he's uh, one of the top uh, top few guys in the city with sacks, with six, right? If Jake Tribatch is doing what he needs to do, Jesse Edis is doing what he needs to do, uh, those guys in the secondary, Savior and Jovan and Amari and Marcus and Jabari, if, if if they're all clicking, doing what they need to do, and, you know, not, don't worry about what happened last week. That dude, Paul Kessler, he knew how to drop dimes. He's a tall drink of water. He's he's looking over the offensive line. 
But if those guys defensively can step up and do what they need to be need to do, awesome, awesome, awesome. And then, you know, I can't leave out my man Spoonamore, um, Matthew Spoonamore, number 21. That dude's a hard hitter, too. So if the defense comes to play, um, and then here, last key, we need to score some points in the second half. We don't leave the we don't need to leave the door open for these guys to think that they can win. No, we need to sc- score some bo- points in the second half because against Hamilton, we didn't score any or Westchester. It doesn't it doesn't matter. We need to score some points in the second half. Um, and so those are some of my keys to the game. Hopefully. You know, I'm, I'm not sure the coaching staff is listening. They probably not listen to the voice of Pally football. But, um, you know, those are just some observations from a parent who's been around Pally football all season. So um, I think I'm fan number one. And, uh, you know, that's just how I see it from my perspective. They might agree. They might not. They might have something slightly different. And that's fine. But um, and everyone's going to have their own opinion as well as it relates to how the game of football uh, can be played, especially with these student athletes that we put a lot of pressure on. Um, we want them to have fun, first of all, but that at the same time, we want them to, um, you know, we want them to win. And it would be so, so great, so awesome for these guys to work so hard to earn a championship at the end of this particular season, right? So um, those are my keys to the game. And uh, Maureen, I'm glad that you um, agree with everything that I said. If I can get my cursor over here. I can put your comment right here. Maureen's like, hey, I agree with everything you say right on. Yeah, it's going to be a wonderful time. So uh, going back to the game, um, to my updates, if you missed it at the top of the show, we want everyone to come on out and support this wonderful football game against Huntington Park this coming Friday. So um, if you're just joining, you can go back and kind of rewind and see what I had to say, some of my keys from my point of view as a voice of Pally football but yes we need everyone to come on out and uh you know let's support our boys this coming friday november 4th 7 30 stadium by the sea let's um encourage them to win and uh, score some points in the second half and do everything that i just said a couple of moments ago that maureen agreed with me <laughs> all right guys i think that's it i've talked enough over here um i didn't have any coaches um i you know i i really uh, you know, I, I think I'm gonna stay away from the coaching staff just, um, you know, until the end of the season. I would love to get uh, Coach Hyduke, who's you know usually available. He's like, hey, sure, Coach, whatever you need, I'll hop on. Um, so I love to get Coach Hyduke, um, you know, probably near the end of the season. Um, Coach Mots, I haven't had him on before, um, and you know, I think um, you know maybe um, uh, John Aiken. John Aiken used to be our athletic director, but now Coach Mots is our athletic director but he's also one of the assistant coaches to our football team. So those three guys, Coach Hyduke, he's always, you know, he'll always hop on. Um, so I love to get Coach Hyduke, uh, John Aiken, and then, of course, Coach Rocky Mott. So uh, we'll see. But for right now, we we just need to win four games. We, we need to f- win four games. And if we can win four games, then we'll come away with a ring on the finger. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's it. I don't want to ramble anymore. Um, Of course, you can find us on our social media. Um, You can find us on TikTok. Uh, Follow us on TikTok. Um, We have a video done by one of our uh, seniors just encouraging you guys to come on out. And then if you haven't done so already, um, you can follow us on This Week in Pally Football on YouTube. Um, and I'm not too sure if my YouTube page worked today. I tried to just access it a couple of moments ago and it was not working. So um, basically, I'll just upload this particular video up to the YouTube page. And then also, last thing, um, if you want to follow us uh, with all the wonderful pictures and all that kind of good stuff, you can follow us on Instagram, Pally HS Football. And that's where you can find us. And other than that, you can find me uh, this coming Friday. Um, I'll be on the sidelines at this game right here. I'll be at this game right here commentating. So if you can't come to the game, you can definitely tune in to our Facebook page and uh, follow me, listen to me talk about um, whatever it is that I see that's happening on the football field. So I appreciate you guys watching. Um, Once again, have a wonderful Halloween night. And um, I will see everyone at the Stadium by the Sea this Friday, November 4th, 730 against Huntington Park. Thanks for watching, and as always, go Pally. Good night. Oh,
Hey, win on me, win on three. Ready, one, two, three. Win! Oh, yeah. Whoa. Stop playing with a beat! 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 Stop playing with a beat!